If we know things about the velocity and acceleration, we now can study objects and what they're doing. What we're going to be looking at is if an object is free falling, it's just falling from being up at a certain position. I could have thrown it up there, I could have shot it up there, I could have just let it drop. But what happens, what are the velocity and acceleration and speed and different things happening of a free falling object? So at the end of this lesson, you'll be able to find out information about free falling objects using calculus. Right, the height of a free falling object, there's a certain position equation, and notice again I have um, S of T for this one because that's just the way that we usually denote position. The formula is negative 16 T squared plus V sub zero T. This V sub zero stands for the initial velocity. How fast was it going when it left the target of, or the person who was throwing it or whatever? And then plus S sub zero. Remember, S is a position, and at time, the sub zero means at time equals zero. So the S sub zero stands for the initial position. Where was the object when it was thrown or dropped or whatever? Okay. There is also an alternate formula, which is very similar to this. Um, if you'll notice, if you're familiar with working with physics, um, the negative 16 and the negative 4.9 have to do with uh, um, acceleration due to gravity. If you're working with this first formula, the first formula is if, is if things are being measured in feet. The second formula is going to be if we're measuring things in meters. So let's go ahead and do an example. Right, a diver jumps upward with an initial velocity of 16 feet per second from a diving board that is 32 feet above the water. This first question asks me to write an equation for the position of the diver. So I'm going to first of all and write, write down that position formula. We're working with feet, so I know to use the feet formula, so it's going to be negative 16 t squared plus v sub zero t plus s sub zero. And then from here, you can just plug in, we'll have negative 16 t squared plus the initial velocity, since it was 16 feet per second and the diver was jumping upward, that will be a positive velocity. So it will be plus 16t plus s sub zero is the initial height. He started 32, he or she, started 32 feet above the water. Okay, so that would be my position formula. The next question says to write an equation for the velocity of the diver. Well, I know to get the velocity, we're going to take the derivative of the position. So taking the derivative of the position formula, I'll get negative 32t plus 16. Remember the 32, since it's a constant, will just be a zero for the de derivative. Okay, then the next question, what is the di di diver's velocity after two seconds? So we're looking for the velocity after two seconds. And since I already nicely wrote that, I know I'm going to plug two into the velocity formula. So negative 32 times two plus 16 gives me an answer of negative 48, and the units that I'm measuring in will be feet per second. So that will be that answer. Oops. Okay. Then when does the diver hit the water? So we have to think about this one a little bit. If the diver hits the water, the position of the diver would be zero. So I'm going to actually in this one go back to my position formula, and I would like my position to equal zero. So I'm going to put zero equals negative 16 t squared plus 16 t plus 32. Okay, and although there are probably more than one way to work this problem, I'm going to use my calculator since we will be able to use our calculators on these problems to help us out. So please grab your calculator out right now as I do so also. All right, let's go ahead and put that position formula in here. We've got y equals negative 16 x, we'll use x instead of t, x squared plus 16 x plus 32. I'm going to go ahead and do a zoom 6 again because that's just what I like to do to start out a graph. So notice we are getting a graph. All right, and we want to basically know where does the diver hit the water. And if you look at right here, we've got on this one, um, it the diver would technically hit the water over here and then again over on the right side. We're not concerned about the left side because that would be a negative time and we only deal with positive times. So we want to find out when does this hit the water? When would that equal zero? So what we're going to do is use the zero function of our calculator. If you don't remember that, we're going to go to second calc. We're going to choose option two, which is the zero. We need a left bound. So I'm going to say for sure to the left of where that's touching is x equals zero and then press enter. 
a right bound for sure would be x equals 4. So I'll type in 4. I don't care to guess, so I'll just enter past that screen. And you notice when I do that, the 0 is at 2. So let's go back to our notes. And then if I go back to the notes, when does the diver hit the water? The diver is going to hit the water when t equals 2, and that was at time equals 2 seconds. All right, and then it said, what is the diver's velocity at impact? So it's asking for velocity, so I'm going to put the velocity, and when did the di at impact would be when they touched, and when they touched was at 2, so we're actually looking for the velocity at 2 again, which we already found. So we'll know the velocity at 2 was negative 48, again, feet per second. And just one comment on this, notice that the velocity was negative. That makes sense because at time equals 2, since they were hitting the water, they were headed in a downward direction. So hopefully now you can work with free-falling objects using calculus.